Okay, have you got it? Have you got the turtles? My cousin asked if I went to Hong Kong, would I buy a camera for him? And I thought, these cameras are so cheap, why don't I buy one for myself? I got back to Auckland, met up with a person I was introduced to called Kristen Zambacher, and uh, she encouraged me to take photos. And uh, after a while she said, we should take movies. A bit of movement wouldn't go astray. So she said, I can get cheap uh, movie film. It was eight millimeter in my day and we did movies. She wrote a script or half a script and our friends joined in and acted the parts. And on the day I had the cast there ready to shoot, she rang and said, I'm just about to board the boat to Sydney. Uh, sorry to let the team down, she said, uh, but you'll manage, you'll, you'll get through it. And then I rang a photographer friend, Tong Wong, he was a professional and he said, read me the manual. I said, I don't have one. And so I um, explained all the knobbly bits on the camera. And he said, well, just take the film anyhow, and uh, we'll go from there, see how it turns out. And I showed him the results, and he said, you don't have to worry about it. Just keep taking them. And that's what I did. And I edited the film myself and put it together. And uh, I did it within about a year and a half. It runs for about an hour and five minutes. I was at the end of filming and I was doing a vampire scene in my grandfather's rundown old shed. It hadn't been used for a million years. There were cobwebs everywhere and the dust was so thick. And he actually had a drill um, press there and I thought that would be a good um, thing to use in my play and I had the victim put her hand under the drill press and uh, the, va uh, the vampire to draw the blood was going to pull uh, the press down on her hand. I said, I can't really give him part, but I'll tell you what I said to Ralph. I'll give you this tin of tomato sauce if you want to be involved. And when I say blood, I want you to rush in and throw this blood everywhere. I want it all over the walls, rushing down the bench and all over the victim's hand, Pauline. And uh, as I was filming, he rushed in and threw the blood everywhere, as I'd explained. And I followed him outside and said, hey, I said, I didn't call blood. He said, I know. He said, waving his arms around frantically. He says, but he says, I got so excited, I couldn't wait. So I guess, how did the, the vampires come into the story? Um, I'd have to think about that. Um, Are you thinking of yourself as a director? Are you, like, well, I wasn't thinking? thinking of myself as anything. They had free run. I had no experience. Um, if we were doing um, a scene where they're running away, I just says, just run. I had no direction, uh, actually. They just, I just gave them a direction, like, I want you to do this. And they just did it because we, we were just friends having fun. But some of them turned out to be really good actors. <laughs> mm. Well, the sad pianist is about this piano a person. He had this uh, talent for playing the piano and he was very kind-hearted. He gave away a shirt and he had nothing to wear but a dressing gown. And the people in the town's square laughed at his outfit. And uh, then he tried to look for a job and couldn't find one. And he hadn't eaten for a few days, so he collapsed. But meanwhile, uh, an ugly hag, I suppose you call it, yes, an ugly hag, um, gave him some magic glasses. And when you wear them, beauty becomes ugliness, and ugliness becomes beauty. And he, he put them on, looked around, and he thought, oh, this is marvellous. But he put them in his pocket and he forgot about them. Well, years later, uh, he became a success through his piano playing. Uh, a talent scout found him, uh, heard his music being played and uh, looked through the window and saw him. 
and became his agent. When he became famous, it was time for him to take a bride and they came from all corners of the earth, princesses and other ones. But uh, he put the glasses on and chose the ugly Dowdy Duchess and she was sort of um, turned into a vision of loveliness. So they're about to get engaged and uh, he falls in love with the statue when he visits the park. And the Duchess realises he's in love with the statue and she gets so jealous she rushes back and smashes the glasses and it breaks the spell. And then the statue becomes a princess and they marry and all's well in Hollywood. <laughs> so that's basically how it ends. Yeah, it's based on Billy. Uh, it's a take on Billy, but of course I've uh, I've emphasised his life in different ways, you know. People who know Billy would understand. And uh, he asked if I'd make another movie, and I explained to him, it's very hard to get a crowd scene together at the same time. You know, with yourself, there's dog shows and weddings where you play and other parties, and then people are going away and they've got things to do and sports. I said, you just can't get a crowd together on the same day, very hard. And someone said to me, why are there so many Chinese children in this book? And I said, because when I'm short of, of uh, characters, I ring my sister and get the children to come and be part of the crowd scene. So that's how it goes. Uh, this is what I call the wall of shame, not the hall of fame. Um, but a lot of people, I don't know, became famous. Up here, uh, there is uh, the girl with the long hair. That is Anna Hoffman. She was uh, famous for being famous, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And of course, Flora McKenzie, she was known uh, for having a brothel in Ring Terrace in Auckland. That's Carmen. Uh, she was very colourful, a loving person, very kind, generous, and shared whatever she had. Everybody loved Carmen. Of course, uh, I'm, I'm getting quite old now, and uh, I knew these people when I was, well, middle-aged, I suppose, and most of them have passed on now. There's only three uh, of us left of that crowd. Mm. Yep. Um, not much else I can tell you. It'd take a million years. <laughs>